<laughs> Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. You can tell we're just distinct. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That is the most energy you're going to get from me all good. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. You can also visit their Facebook, Milwaukee Locker. Um, you can visit, uh, they do have an eBay page, I believe. So yeah. Hockey Locker there. So we got a bunch of things. Uh, they do also do skate sharpening. So if you're in the area and need your skate sharpen, go over to Hockey Locker. As well as they have all of the current gear. And yeah, well, if you need, if you have a blank jersey and you ever wanted it customized, they'll send it out there too. All righty. So let's get into this game between the Nashville Predators and the Dallas Stars. All right, shots on goal in the first period. Dallas outshoots Nashville 18 to 1. Yes, you heard that correctly. In the second period, da uh, Nashville outshoots Dallas 21 to 15. In the third period, Dallas outshoots Nashville 8 to 7. And in total, Dallas outshoots Nashville 41 to 29. Did you read that first period shots again for those in the back? Yeah, 18 to 1 in favor of Dallas. Yes. Just wanted to clarify that they heard that correctly. <laughs> right. All, All right. right. I got uh, it. Starting got it. up first, 35 seconds in the Sam Steele. A guy who was unrestricted, had Anaheim didn't want him. He was one of their top prospects. And, oh, here he is burning the Preds. Oh, speaking of burning the Preds, we're paying him to beat us. Matt Duchesne scoring his 20th of the season with an assist from Martian, or Marshman. His 26th. Then, oh, look, a far, another former Pred, Craig Smith. Seventh goal of the season. Oh, look, but it's Sam Steele on the assist. Wyatt Johnston scores his 16th with an assist from Ty Delandria, his fourth, and Thomas Harley is 18th. That puts them up 4 0. All right. In the second period, um, Heaskin scores his sixth for the Stars, making it 5 0, assisted by Johnston, his 19th, and Delandria, his fifth. That was at the 440 mark. Then at the 950 mark, Nashville finally gets on the board. From Smith scoring his sixth of the year, assisted by McCarron, his sixth, and Carrier, his 11th. Then at the 10.51 mark on the power play for Dallas, um, Seguin scores his 20th of the year, assisted by Johnson, his 20th, and Marshman, his 27th. Then at the 11.21 mark, Nashville gets on the board again with a goal from Novak, his 11th, assisted by Nyquist, his 29th. That's his fifth point in five games. Okay. And then at the 1947 mark, Matt Duchesne gets on the board for the Stars again, scoring his 21st of the year, assisted by Seguin, his 24th, and Suter, his 11th. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not to correct you, I believe it's pronounced Sagan, but don't quote me on that. Okay. Um. Uh, Nyquist has had a really good year for the Preds. I th I don't see them moving him, but he's had a really good year for the Preds. If okay. if people came knocking for the right price, I might jump. Right. Um. Then in the third period, Ty Delandria scores his second with an assist from uh, J uh Jason Robertson, his thirty seventh, and Ryan Suter his twelfth. Then Wyatt Johnston scores his seventeenth on the power play with an assist from Tyler Sagan. It is Sagan. Okay. Okay. I looked. I, I have the pronunciation tab open. Um, did they just take an assist away from Duchesne? It literally just changed. Uh, it had Duchesne on the assist. Yeah, it took Duchesne off the assist, so that just happened. I was literally about to say Duchesne's name. No, uh, they took it off. They took a point away from Duchesne. 
Uh, your referees were Corey Servette and Chris Lee. Your linesmen were Tobias, uh, James Tobias and Ryan Daisy. Head coach for the Dallas Stars is former Milwaukee Admiral Peter DeBoer. Oh, wow. Um, and former Nashville Predator Andrew Burdett. Uh, scratches for the Stars with Joel Hot Hanley. Uh, scratches for Nashville was Dante Fabro, Keeper Sherwood, and Luke Evangelista. So if Evangelista is sitting, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see more guys get swapped after this. Right. It just doesn't seem to be going well for guys in Nashville. And the confidence is high here. So obviously the confidence here, those guys got to pick that up very quickly. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to get freight trained by the Admirals fans. <clears throat> um, Parson and came in and had what, a one goal, three assists. Mm -hmm. All righty. Um, in net for the Stars was. If I get it, what is going on? Are you having? Can you see the goalie stats? Ah, uh, give me a sec. Um, no. Uh oh. For neither the stars or the predators. I just refreshed it and still nothing. All right, let's see if I can get. Ah, uh, yeah, we go. In net for the stars was Jake Ottinger. Uh, he stopped 20 of 22. Do not, I'm not even going to be able to give you the same percentages. Um, starting in net for the Predators was UC Saros. He will take the loss on this game. Um, he had 20 minutes of play, had four goals given up against in 18 shots. Yes, you heard that right. Four goals on 18 shots. Uh, Blanket gave up five on 23. This is not on the goalies. No. By any stretch. <clears throat> uh, McCarron took a game uh, misconduct after that roughing, that double roughing, by the way. I don't know if you do that. No. Okay. Um, let's see. Can I get it to work now? There we go. No goalies, but we got the player stat line. Mm -hmm. All right, Glass was a minus three, Forsberg minus two, Sissons minus two, Dyquist minus one, Jankowski minus two, Smith minus two, McCarron minus two, uh, Novak minus one, uh, minus two for Shed, minus two for Lazan, minus three for Barry and McDonough, plus one for Carrier, and minus one for Yossi. They're just getting beat. In the battle department, in the contested department, in the physicality department, they're yeah. just not showing effort. I I think that this Preds team, def, def, I think we need to shock the culture. Yeah. You have okay. You don't need Soros to win a championship. No. Vegas I don't think proven so. that. Washington's proven that. Look at the teams have won cups recently, with the exception being Tampa Bay. Not a lot of them had good goaltending. Right. Colorado had Darcy Kemper. Yeah. So you don't need good goaltending. You need good defense. You need good scoring. You need to be able to push the game uphill, not downhill. All right, you need to be able to control the tempo, and they just can't do that right now. 
They, they, like when I watched it that third, they were just skating around. If I'm Barry, if Barry Trotz was watching, they showed him during the third, looking like this. Which, if I was a GM, and I saw this game, I'd be looking like as well. I'd probably also be throwing things, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, even the announcers said that this loss probably makes Nashville greater sellers. Yep. And 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 this is the thing I'm taking. <clears throat> I've seen it. I've seen it. They're calling for Trotz's head. They're calling for, you know, they want answers. Why is this team not performing? I think we're going to get that very soon. Yeah, hopefully. My humble opinion, if they do fire him, I hate to admit this, but Carl Taylor may be your only option. Of fixing this. Yeah. This man, nobody understands this system better than him. Right. No one. Look at what he is doing to the AHL right now. There should be no reason the way the Prince are playing with lack of effort. Right. It's either a player problem or coaching problem. It's one of the two. In some players' cases, it's a player problem. In some players' cases, it could be a coaching problem. But Craig Smith is having, or, or Cole Smith, sorry, Cole Smith, too many Smiths in the leg. Um, Cole Smith is having a really good season. You may not want to hear that. But a guy only making $777,000 is only 24 years old has 17 points. That's a career high. Yep. Matter of fact, that's how many points he had last season. And we're only 53 games in. Actually, you can make that 18 points because they haven't updated it yet. You know, I mean, you you, you really got to answer some questions here. I mean... I mean, look, look. let's look at this. I mean, you have contracts up after the end of this season. Yakov Trin and Dennis Kiriana, Thomas Novak, Igor Afanasia, Mark Jankowski, Michael McCarran, Kiefer Sherwood. Sherwood, I'd let go. Barry, Carrier, and Favreau. And then Lankinen. That's just currently. Who knows what it could look like after that, but that's just currently. You also got to figure out what you're going to do with Tomasito, what you're going to do with Carson, because they're up. Are, do you call up Weatherby, who's having a career year in Milwaukee? Do you call up Foodie, who's been playing at the top of his game right lately? All right. <sighs> call up a guy like Spencer Statsny, who's been playing wonderful. I mean, I'm going to say this. To, uh, uh, if you call him Stetsney, you might as well call him Wills because Wills be his partner in crime. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you do that, I mean, great for the Admirals because guess who's coming up? Prokop and Mateer. So right. you get the young guys going. You know, you got to figure out what, what Troy's got to figure out what he's doing. Because that's up to him. You know, Nashville has a lot of cap open. So for teams like New Jersey, who are right up against the cap by about 600,000, 
if you got a guy like I mean, and that's the question. Do you do you want to give up a guy like Alexander Holtz? Yeah. Or Austin Mercer? You know, I mean, you've got two guys on your team who are, are, are really wrapped cap heavy. Um, I'm just not sure. You, you got Carolina with the same thing. You know, they've got about a million in projected cap space. They do have your draft capital this year to be able to trade. Um, but will they be able to afford Martin Nikas or Nietzsche's Nietzsche's? Right. Like, so would they be willing to give him up for Soros at a first? Like, would that be viable for them? Would have maybe like a um like a Ronan Seeley or something like that where um that you know you'd have a little more for for Milwaukee and maybe even trading like Auntie Ronta or Spencer Martin. Right. Um, <laughs> Ronta can hold down the fort and you can let him and uh and uh, like it and battle it out for who's going to be the goalie next year. Right. They're both UFAs. Why not? They're veteran goalies. Good guys for uh, Yaroslav Askarov to sit behind. Or you can let them both walk and call up Yarrow and sign Groshnik to an NHL deal and be like, here's your chance. Yeah. We're rebuilding, so here's your chance. If that happens, I fully believe that Carl Taylor would be the head coach at that point. Sorry about my stomach showing. <laughs> Unaware. <laughs> that boy status. See, you're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> <clears throat> but no, like, I I'm just being honest about it, you know. Um, there's, there's so much going on towards the deadline right now. For Nashville, this just made my job, our job, a little easier knowing. Yeah. As I'm grabbing my phone to make sure nothing's happened already. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh boy, 22 notifications. Like I said, I'm kind of going through things. Uh, quotes from the game. Uh, Ryan McDonough said that it was a terrible game by us. Well, duh. 
Uh, Andrew Burnett said this is disapp it's disappointing it can only be addressed so many times. Either we're not taking it seriously enough or we're not understanding. So the response and the mindset is really disappointing. Uh, Roman Yossi said we could have been down 6 nothing. We left you some juice out to dry. And that's definitely concerning. I've got to be I've got to be way better first. It starts with us, the leaders. We've got to find a way to get the team going and play better. After a game like Tuesday, and nobody's happy. You've got to find a way to respond. This is not it. Yeah. So, just saying. Um, you know, every, you know, that's the thing. What is your thoughts on this situation as we're ticking down on time here? Um, well, it's a situation that nobody likes to be in or ever wants to be. Um, gotta figure out how to fix something, whether that's moving certain players around before or at the deadline, whether it's a whole coaching overhaul, whether it's having to sit down individually with each of the coaches and players as a GM and the owners, you know, something's got to be done to help change the mindset. Yes, they want to win. They're not giving it their best effort every game, though, from what I am seeing. No, it's, it's particularly been... on defense. Agreed. Playing um, in front of the goalie, they haven't been doing it well. That is one of the things I was going to say. The other thing I wanted to say is, uh, before we get into that a little bit more, um, I wanted to give you a little bit of a thing. Um, we're currently tied for fourth place in points. Um, third and fourth are tied. Um, the Blues have a four-point gap on us with games in hand. So the teams in front of us have games in hand. The teams behind us have games in hand as well. And they're the, the we could drop as far as sixth place in the wild card if Calgary and Minnesota keep winning. Right. And Minnesota's been hot lately since the All-Star break winning four straight. So that's not something like that's something I'd be concerned about too if I'm the Preds. Because here come the Flames, here comes Seattle, and here comes Minnesota. Arizona's shooting about 50-50. The Ducks are shooting 50-50, and the Sharks are starting to pick it up. If you don't pick it up soon, you're going to be finding yourself at the bottom of the division with the Sharks and the Blackhawks. Yeah. Because Arizona's only six points behind you. Minnesota's won, and they have a game in hand. So with that one game in hand... Guess what? They win that one game. You're sitting on the outside looking in. And the next time Minnesota plays, they play the Sabres. And that should be a pretty much win. And I love the, my, like, the Sabres are my second favorite team in the league. And that's only because that's who I grew up as a fan before the Preds came into the league. Like I grew up as a Sabres fan. With a little bit of love for Patrick Wall. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, and, and if the Preds lose that day, call it a wrap because they're not catching the Blues. Anyway, so yeah. if the Wild win and you lose to the Blues, you just gave up four points to your division. Right. You gave up four points to the Blues because you lost. That means you lost two points and they gained two points. This just isn't good. It's not. Right. This is not good enough. You know. It's just not. They're 24th in the league in goals against. And 19th in the league in goals for. The 20th in face-off, 27th in the penalty kill, and 21st in the power play. 
In their last 10 games, they're 3 6 and 1. The Blues are 7 and 3. Yeah. The Wild are on a four game winning streak. Just you can't keep dropping games. And I, I, I just don't understand. Right. You know, it's it's baffling. So somebody, okay, this came straight from one of the Preds online writer. And said, to everyone selling that the Preds need to sell, I'm not disagreeing. I'm rather adding loudly that Andrew Brunette needs to learn to manage this ro the roster he has a little better. Good question to ask. I mean, you offered a guy a hug coaching job with only one year head coaching experience. On a very good Florida team who's still good. Uh -huh. We're not talking about a Preds roster who has two stud goalies, two stud, you know, two stud defensemen, and six forwards that can put 30 pucks in the net. Right. The Preds don't have that. The Preds have never cracked 70 points on a on a player before. The Preds have never had a 40 goal score. Never. Not once. We need to change the culture. Why? Our culture was defense. Isn't that what wins championships? Now our culture's like in the middle. That gets you nowhere. I'm I'm just questioning a lot. I mean, I, we knew a couple years ago that when Pekka retired, they were gonna be some changes. Then we knew. Once there were some cap issues, there were going to be some trades. Then we knew that Poyle was going to retire. Then we became sellers. Then we signed O'Reilly and Nyquist and all this, and all of a sudden, oh, they could be content. No. What they did is Nyquist is a great player. O'Reilly's a great player. Forsberg's a great player. They all work great together. Apparently, Nyquist and Novak work good together. But where's everybody else? Where's Evangelista? Where's Where's Giryanov that we had in Milwaukee? Is the environment in Nashville too toxic? Is Roman Yossi a good captain for this environment at the current moment? Are any of the leaders a good leader right now? There's so many questions right now. All so right. The only thing we can get is answers in time. Yep. Hope to bounce back. If you would be grateful to let me know when I got 10, that would be great. <laughs> oh, you are under a minute. I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been our kind of TED Talk. We are very frustrated with this. Um, we will not be here this weekend, but barring anything, you know, we'll do what we got to do. We'll be here if uh, 
trades happen, but um, barring, yeah. we have a lot going on this weekend. So thank you and have a wonderful weekend.